What is up, everybody? Okay. I know things look a little different. I set up my room a little different, so we got a little new setup. And I'm ready to get started to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And you guys already know it's all about astral projection. And I feel like this one should be very open. We talk about astral projection we ask questions, we get deep into it because this is a very broad topic, especially related to astral training. And I wanted to talk about some of your guys' astral training. You guys tell a little bit of your stories, what it looks like. And people are asking me about my astral training and what that has looked like for me. And let's first, actually, let's talk about what astral training is. So astral training is when you go to the astral realm and you undergo or you experience certain things that you take with you to the physical or with your mission on earth. A lot of you have been doing this almost every night, whether you go to another universe or you just have a dream of you fighting something or, or you're like experiencing something that you take with you in the day. You're like, wow, like I actually needed that. That is for sure astral training. I want to enter my grandpa's dream for April Fools. Bro, <laughs> if you do don't kill him, man. Don't don't scare him too much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes wake up with scars. Yes, that is pretty common. You may wake up with scars or you wake up with certain markings. Very common actually. I've noticed that. So if there's any of you that want to come on and talk a little bit about your astral experiences or anything like that totally open for it and if you guys want to talk about astral techniques and all that we could do that as well but i want you guys to let me know what related to astral projection you wanted to talk about first because this is going to be very very broad <laughs> i know this class is about to be lit i can't wait to talk about this after this um, i'll probably recharge and then go live later. I was really thinking about it, but I don't usually like saying I go live because then if I don't, then people are like, oh, you said you would. But I really do want to go on there and talk a little about some more stuff too. I realize one big thing is people think astral projection is really black and white. It is not. Like the way I astral project is very different from the way many others astral project. It's a lot of people, you, you, they think you just meditate and then you go there. For me, it's not like that. For me, I have to go to sleep first, and then I realize I'm in the astral realm, and then I travel consciously that way. Cash, are you watching FIBA tomorrow? Never heard of FIBA. What is that? So you use lucid dreaming? Yes, I definitely use that technique, and I like the one way better. Oh, basketball? No, I don't watch sports. <laughs> The most I watch actually is track. I love me some track. I love me some track. Canada against Serbia. Maybe I'll have to check it out. My dad loves that shit. What's up to everybody? Yes, gang. Feel free to put your hand up if you guys would like to join as well. Do not be shy at all. I found a technique that lets me immediately project after I wake up without having any vibrational stages or anything. Ooh, and I would love for you to tell us about that. And I want to share my screen. You know what? This is going to end up, <laughs> Genie, this is going to end up me bringing up the game again. <laughs> because I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my God, this is so similar. So, um,. <laughs> I know I was literally just about to share my screen and show some. You know what? Let me do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, hold on a second. So the Federation has been giving me briefings about the galaxy, and they've been showing me a lot related to different beings, different classes, classes in terms of what type of being you could be, you know, like how we have like witches and um priests and all that type of stuff we have that as well and i actually wanted to make a video about this and i'm, I'm gonna share my screen right now luca you're gonna like this one about the show oh you're gonna like this dog and you know what this pairs really well with astral projection too because what you see here is 
exactly what you will see in the astral realm if you travel beyond earth you will also see this on earth but also beyond earth let me share my screen okay here we go so this is the game that i was referring to hold on i just gotta move around my screen so i could see everything okay there we go so here are the different classes of beings you could be as a human so you will see here these this is all a game it's all a game thing but this is very realistic i'm telling you world of warcraft is very interesting with the way their mentalities the way they depict things very realistic paladin bro okay you know what let's go through them generally and then we will go into them in depth and we'll talk about the truth what it really looks like all of that you guys just gotta let me know what you want to focus on okay okay let's let's go to warriors first so warriors are typically just mighty people that are able to battle and defend themselves and ensure the enemy doesn't focus on their softer skin allies or like that's with um with these guys the orcs right they have different abilities melee damage tank and rage and they have these type of specializations these are the different classes but there are different races now, of course, we have the different sides. This is very realistic to what the galaxy looks like. Even though there's a lot more races, this is very general. So we have the Alliance and we have the Horde. You would consider the Alliance like beings that are part of the Galactic Federation or beings that are in their, their center. Actually, where's the, where's the one where, oh, it's one of these, but I'll just stay here. So these beings are all centered around essentially peace and um like it says right here defenders of justice and duty who protect the realm against any aggressors including the savage horde but then the it's interesting because the horde it says um the indomitable horde is driven by unity they are dervent or derv fervent <laughs> keepers of freedom and hope relentlessly opposed to any who threaten these ideals including the stringest alliance so one thing i noticed so you, people will say like good and evil it's really just like um i guess you could label it like that but it's really just different mentalities and different things they fight for what i really like to do was look at the humans Humans are really interesting because this is what we are now. But look at the racial traits they have. Let me just check Discord, make sure everything's good. Okay. Look at the racial tactics or racial traits they have. They have diplomacy, reputation gains increased. They have the will to survive, which removes all stun effects and the human spirit. And we talked about how all beings look at the human spirit as very powerful. So when you go out and you astral project, you will notice that beings look at you as very powerful, even though you may not be like physically powerful or like um, powerful in any way that those races look at power or their culture. You, they all recognize human spirit as very powerful. Really, really cool, right? Now, these parts were talked about the home city and all that. It's mostly interesting for gameplay. But I think it's super, super cool. One interesting part is how, when we go back here, the Pandarans and the Drakthir, they both could be light or dark. What was this game called again? Like, you already know, World of Warcraft. Fire. I only, I only came across this last night, which is why right now I'm like, it's firing me up. Uh, oh, there's one thing. You know how we always call the dark force or the dark side? we would call it, um, uh, we just call it the dark or like dark force. Let's, let's rename it. I want to rename it and call it the Archon. When I looked up what the Archon means, Archon, I would keep hearing this by other beings, the kingdom of darkness. This is what we could start to 
label them as and I what I'm starting to call them now from to this day. I would call them the Archon. And they they almost they like that. They want to be recognized as the Archons or Kingdom of of Darkness. Yeah, you do have to you do have to have a monthly subscription, but you can buy it for free. You could download it for free, but you could only get to a certain level. Is the Archon related to Animus? I actually don't know who Animus is. Hold on. A usually prejudiced and often spiteful or malevolent ill will. Basic attitude or governing spirit. Feeling of hate or anger towards someone or something. Then definitely it pairs. They are, they're, the energy is related. I thought about playing World of Warcraft again after reading this, but I was like, that's not the point of why the Federation showed me this. The point of this was for information that we live in, in World of Warcraft, like IRL. <laughs> like on Earth, this is IRL. Let's go back to World of Warcraft. Okay. So let's go to classes. This part is for real, for real, for real. I like it. So we have warriors. Paladins, we have hunters, we have rogue, priest, shaman, mage, which you could basically say is a witch, warlock, monk, druid, demon hunter, death knight, and evoker. These are really cool because these are real classes you could have as a person. Now, I know this isn't really related to astral projection, but this, this helps because you guys will look at this and be like, well, like, which one am I? I it, took me, it took me a while to figure out, okay, what would I be? And I thought, oh, well, maybe Demon Hunter. But Demon Hunter, the way they depict it, is very low vibrational. So then I went as a warrior, just a, a classic warrior. Some of you may be drawn to, like, being a hunter, which these people are really good with nature and uh, pairing with animals and things like that. Rogue is like a warrior, but they play dirty. S super interesting. Super interesting. Uh, shaman, spiritual leaders. These are the classes that beings in the astral realm and all spiritual people recognize as real. So when you look at it, I, I look at some of you and I'm like, oh, that guy's clearly a mage or a warlock or my homegirl is a hunter. Right? Like, that's why I like this video game because in our minds we can be like it, it makes it easier for us when we're out in real life and people like you meet a witch and you're like you don't want to call them a witch you're like oh you're a mage or you meet someone who is like <laughs> like a monk essentially but they're like a fighter yeah then you're like yeah oh you're a monk right so it, it makes things easier for us to understand let me look up let me see what page you see okay you see that clear page going to i was actually looking up astral spiders because i had you guys already know about that let's just look at some images let's see some things that may spark something as soon as you look up astral projection what do you see <laughs> you see so much tutorials how to leave in five steps um people talk about literally leaving the conscious way but they don't talk about the unconscious way and that's one thing i wanted to talk about too is when you astral project unconsciously, you guys basically do it every single night. You guys all do it every single night, especially, I'm looking at some people in here, I'm like, who, you, you, like all of you are doing this very much unconsciously. I want you all to first consider your dreams as real, as something is actually an astral projection. Because people will be like, okay, well, what is the difference what is the difference between astral projection and a dream? Okay, if you guys want to get technical, let's talk about the difference. A dream, you'll notice it's just like a story. You're playing in a story mode, very story mode-like, and you're essentially getting messages. So maybe you dream something, and it's all very metaphorical, and you wake up, and you're like, oh, that was telling me about what's going to happen tomorrow, or yada, 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 whatever it is. Astral projection is you traveling outside of your body and traveling the astral realm. It's basically, it's basically like how we have the physical realm and you could do anything in the physical realm, you could do anything in the astral. 
and there's different levels of the astral just as you would say there's different levels of the physical like lower astral and higher astral higher physical lower physical right same kind of thing okay but no matter what whether you are dreaming or astral projecting you are still traveling you are still your consciousness is not what your physical body anymore your your presence or your awareness is somewhere else so no matter what consider it traveling okay Sara asked, Cash, so I could use all abilities I have in my dreams in Astral. You can, and sometimes even more. So let, let's go back to World of Warcraft again real quick. So um, let's go for, actually, Sara, I'm trying to think of which one you really are like. Um, I'm kind of thinking Death Knight. <laughs> Death Knights engage their foes up close. Supplementing or supplementing swings of their weapons with dark magic that renders enemies vulnerable to damage. That that ain't you, Irks. <laughs> I would consider you very much like like one of these three right here. Yeah, I was thinking I was thinking Rogue too. Initiate comeback with a surprise attack from the shot. That's you. All right, so that's you. So we would consider you a rogue. And when you're in the astral realm, so say for example you're a mage, say you 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 know that you are really into witchcraft and really good at being a witch then you'll notice all these type of powers that you do in the physical especially like these like and you don't see them but you do them in the astral you see that shit so you could cast say you you're really connected to to like w fire okay just for example here when you go to the astral realm and you are already good at doing witchcraft in the physical, you can just go like this and cast fire out your hands in the astral realm. Yes, it will cause like, um, you're using your energy. So just like how if you do witchcraft in the physical, you're using your energy. Same thing in the astral, except you don't have the physical limitation. So you're not limited by your physical perceptions anymore. You're completely on the astral, which makes you look dead ass like this. Like if, it's, if you're trying to do like a little spell work like this, you, you will see that. <laughs> so depending on what type of mage you are then if you're like a frost a, here they have arcane they have fire and frost but you can have many different there's many different types there's earth there's water so many different types of shit this is just like the basic ones a mage has many options for controlling the battlefield from freezing enemies in place or transforming them into helpless critters real too when you go to the astral you could do that shit so i know there was a purpose i came across this and why i was guided to show this especially for astral projection so i was confused I was like y'all want me to go into this for astral projection this is a new one the the alpha draco if you want to say really really fire they could be light or dark super damn fire when I first started astral projecting, my magic in the astral sucked. It's getting better now, though. Yes. Yes. So you will need to practice when you're in astral realm with your real powers. So, you know what? Let's, let's read. Let's get some inspiration. Let's get some inspiration from these. Um, what th I'm trying to put it in a way that's like, oh, not from this game, but... Because they really did channel a lot of this information or get inspiration from real shit. So let's go, let's go back to, um, <laughs> look how Ari just came in as we finished talking about mages. Ari, this is you, just so you know. You know what? Let's look at, say, a hunter, if you are a hunter. Hunters battle their foes at a distance or up close, commanding their pets to attack while they knock their arrows fire their guns or ready their pole arms though their weapons are effective at short and long ranges hunters are also highly mobile they could evade or restrain their foes to control the arena of battle they have features melee damage range damage pets and solo play thanks to their pets and damage output hunters are effective at completing quests and leveling quickly so, oh, I like that part too. We got to talk about quests and leveling up because you know how we do, um, we talk about all the time in the server, we talk about 
uh, we talk about what is it called? Missions and assignments, really just quests. And I looked at, I was watching videos of the, like them doing World of Warcraft quests. And I used to play when I was little, so I was getting flashbacks, bro. I was getting flashbacks. But when I think about the quests and stuff they do, I'm like, yo, that's like for real. Like you'll go out as a, as a Federation agent, you'll be sent on like quests. You'll go out somewhere and then, they'll be, you know, like in World of Warcraft, all they have that like the exclamation above them. You go up to them and they're like, oh, I lost my cat. Can you help me find her? And then your reward is like experience points and money. And you're like, all right, I got you. And then you go run out and find their damn cat. And they're like, oh my God, you found whiskers for me. Thanks. And then they give you this stuff. That's like real life. <laughs> it really is like that. So that's why I'm now starting to call my missions and assignments quests. So like sometimes my dad will come up to me and he's like, a son, like I'm going to my friend's house. Do you want to come? And the Federation's like, there's, there's stuff there for you to do. And I'm, I'll tell my dad, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And we go. And then there's some people that need help spiritually or, or emotionally or something like that. And then I get stuff in return, either experience or they literally pay me or they give me something in return. And literally what you guys all do, what you guys are preparing to do more of is we call them mission and assignments. Now we can start to call them quests and leveling up. And as you level up and you do experience, you get experience, you get more powers, you realize more about yourself, you have more strength. So you may feel like you're on level three right now, but as you do more, you level up. This game is a whole analogy for real shit. I like this, man. Oh my, This is hyping me the hell up. I spent so much of the night last night going through this. So I see why I was going through this to show y'all. And you guys will have, if you're a hunter in real life, you will have like in physical or astral, you have astral pets. So you go to the astral and then you have literal pets or, or creatures. We call them astral creatures. And then. Cool, eh? I told you you shouldn't have this. Wow. Now you like it. Listen, listen, Luca. I loved me some wow from when I was little, but I was straying away from video games because I was like, this is a waste of time. But. Now I'm realizing how much real life is like a video game and it makes me hype. I'm like, I am playing a video game right now, right here, right now. And so all of this is just piece together things for me. For some reason, I'm really drawn. We could go through all these, whatever guys you guys want me to go one. If you guys want me to go into one or whatever, or dive into it, just, just type it and I'll go into it. But humans really draw me. I really like the most how they talk about uh the human spirit and how strong it is so humans could be any of these classes and the human spirit is what all other beings look up to and none of them have this which what which is what makes humans extremely powerful i could help with lore i'm drawn to night elf okay i'm drawn to wolf okay let's do it let's go to night elf Remember, these are real beings, too, in the astral as well. So what you're reading here, take that as, take that as either literal, a mix of literal metaphorical, okay? The ancient and reclusive night elves, also known as Kaldori, have played a pivotal role in shaping Azeroth's fate, or you want to say Earth or the galaxy's fate. Fighting for the Alliance or the Galactic Federation, Many night elves today still remember events of the War of the Ancients over 10,000 years ago, the Great Lyran Wars and the Orion Wars, when they halted the Burning Legion's first invasion of Azeroth, talking the Draconians. These ferocious elves will fight tooth and nail to ensure their sacred lands are never again tainted by evil. This hypes me up so bad, man. Okay, look at some of the classes they could have. Druid, Monk, Rogue, Warrior, Hunter, Demon Hunter. I find Demon Hunter interesting because you guys, I called myself that for a while. But the way they depict Demon Hunter here, I don't like. It's very dark. Um, they uphold a dark legacy, one that frightens their allies and enemies alike. They embrace fell and chaotic magics, energies that have long threatened the war of Azeroth, or the world of Azeroth, sorry. 
believing them necessary to challenge the burning legion willing the power of demons they've slain so i would say i i really the opposite right it's like i'll call myself a demon hunter someone who hunts demons but not a hunter that is a demon which is what this says essentially interesting the way they depict things night elves have the racial traits and if you're a star seed you have some of this if you're an elf star seed aka ari so let's see wisp spirit transforms to a wisp upon death increased speed increases haste during the night and critical strike during the day slips into the shadows becomes difficult to detect increase chance to dodge and movement speed reduce nature damage taken i don't know i don't know if that i don't know i that means anything though what do you mean by that definitely connected low-key with this but not sure fully it's okay just just take it in just take the information and know there's truth very much truth home city is darnas darnasus or donasus they have a leader really cool i know i'm like i'm looking at this and i'm like hmm increase dodge movement and speed nature resistance you're trying to like think about how that implies irl and the nature resistance one i already know about super cool it's essentially if you have nature resistance it's like any attacks from nature forces will not be as impactful on you because you are nature you night elves or elves in general that we label them as are very connected to nature drainy as well drainy are like they call them uh aliens because they're not from the planet that uh that the whole game resides upon but that's cool but yeah all these for real especially when i saw the wargans i was like Yo, where, where the hell is my homegirl at? What's her name? <laughs> Y'all, I'll forget your name. Even, even if you're, if I have known you for 10 years, I'll forget your name. Bro, as soon as I saw this, I'm like Macklin. Like I instantly just saw Macklin all over the place. Cause she, you know, she affiliated with these beings a lot. Dark flight, flare, running wild calm the wolf and viciousness macklin's for sure got the viciousness i'll say that altered form between human and worgen forms when it's not combat hmm cool worgen mange morgan worgen mage was my childhood awakening i really liked um when i used to play this game I loved being, where is it? I, I gotta go back that. <laughs> Let me go to races. I would just play whatever. The Pandarans confused me. <laughs> but I loved playing a human, a night elf, or a drainy. Those were my favorite ones. And in here, I loved playing, um, it was a Tauren and a troll and a blood elf. I liked these three when I used to play. But yeah, that's besides the point. These type of beings and energies and powers you will see in the astral when you travel beyond Earth or even on Earth. So the whole point of talking about this was to have this type of understanding. But now we can focus on astral projection techniques, whatever. You guys just let me know. Just go ahead, ask questions, and we will touch on them right away. If you want to tell your story or talk one-on-one -on -one with me with everybody here, just put your hand up and we good. I'd love for some of you to come on the, the um, podium right now and talk. Okay, we'll go back here. Oh, there was a website full about astral projection. Um, is it this one? Yeah, it's this. I had this website since I was little, when I was a little man, bro. So let's dive into let's just go to astral projection okay now we will go into this in a second 
Look at League of Legends map and lore. Okay. Why did that come up in my head too? I was like, maybe I need to look into that one as well. Isn't that connected? I was looking at its lore. Yeah. From what I see, they're connected because people that play World of Warcraft love League of Legends too. Oh yeah, do you remember me showing you? Char says, I remember you were showing us this website August 2022. Whoa, you got a good memory, bruh. How do you make sure no other entities enter into your body while your consciousness is elsewhere? I don't want you guys ever worrying about beings jumping into your body because that will not happen. But what can happen is beings will linger around your body. They may poke at it and just like wait for you to come back but they will never jump into your body. I want you to know that. But most people to feel comfortable, they'll protect their body with a bubble. I don't do that bubble shit. Personally, now, this is personally what I do, is I have stuffed animals that have tulpas on them, so those protect me and are with me no matter what. And I also have crystal, see it kind of right there faintly. That is my, it's like right under my lamp. That is my astral uh dragon protector that protects me as i'm astral projecting it makes it so that i don't have to come back to my body so much just to make sure the energy around me is i right of course when you astral project i like to come back to my body to so i don't fade away in the astral room I, like i remember that i'm in the astral but like i'll go to the astral for a while come back and i'll wake up and i'll be like okay and then i go back to sleep and then i go back in the astral realm so i'll wake up about Maybe two or three times a night, depending how comfortable I am. Sometimes I won't wake up at all. Or I'll wake up a whole lot and then can't sleep. Depends. But overall, generally, I'll wake up two to three times a night to check up on my body and to just root back into the, my physical body. And then I'm like, okay, now I can go back. But my guards and my other astral battalion guards protect me as I sleep. You could just instantly ask a spirit to protect you or ask you could easily make a tulpa make it a tulpa they kind of complicate it online but it's super simple you really just make a it's a tulpa is a programmed um is a programmed entity so it's almost like an astral robot but it has its own consciousness i've heard stories of people making tulpas and they ran away like they had like, they awakened that they were tulpas. Isn't that cool? But I'm saying that just so you can see how well you could make this shit. But the tulpas I have, they're attached to my, my uh, stuffed animals and they protect me as I sleep. You guys could do the same thing. You just envision the type of being you want and you program it with certain mentalities and understandings and a job and it will do it for you. Oh yeah. I forgot we talked about Pokemon cards too. You could do that same exact thing. Like I have, I have these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. This one is a dragon. Hold on a second. My dad's calling me. He's about to come upstairs. Oh, I got to mute myself. So I will, I have a whole bunch of these cards. I even have like a, this one. Like these Pokemon cards, you could use as Talpas or astral spirits. And so you really just, the card is there just to assist you. So you have the card and energetically, it's like I could call upon this spirit. It's either like this one represents a form of my higher self or a reminder of my higher self I keep, but I use it just as energetic understanding and reminder. So I'll keep it on my desk to just bring that energy toward me remember that's my energy but you can use pokemon cards as spirits just know any pokemon cards you have those beings you see on there are real spirits in the universe somewhere and you could call upon them so you can call upon them and use that card as like a portal you're like can you help me can you be here for me for whatever whatever that's that, i said that's a you go bro i listen y'all trying to expose me i said this was a Yu-Gi-Oh card trust me trust yeah, I love this one. This one is called the Yukio Punk Amazing Dragon. Love this shit. And I gave my mom some Pokemon cards too so she could call upon spirits 
I find them really awesome. Does it have to be a Pokemon card or it could be any kind of card? It could be really any type of card. It could be any just picture or a picture of a being, a spirit that you have and you purposely, you put the intent to call upon a being like that or you make a tulpa that looks exactly like that so you create the tulpa through that card. Endless things you could do. All depends on what you want to do. Okay, let me read some of this. How much progress will I make with my telekinesis ability in the future? I kind of started to doubt about it, uh, but, but internet is shit right now, sorry. It's all good, bro. So you're asking about your progress making with telekinesis. Now that is something that is kind of hard to uh to accomplish especially in your physical body but you bro watch in two to three years you're gonna have amazing amazing like powers with it so you do have progress you especially i'm talking specifically to you you have progress right now where did you try like move a tissue or something was it a tissue or a cup i keep seeing it like a tissue or a piece of paper yeah okay so it was a tissue okay yeah your guides are talking about you moving things and especially the tissue keep testing out with that and try and experiment with how you could use your internal power and your mind to move that shit more so try and just experiment and feel it don't think about it too much feel it more you are literally accessing the power within you to move that shit Rainwater asks, can you tell me what's been happening to me while I'm sleeping? While you've been sleeping, you've been talking with a lot of beings, bruh. A lot of beings. And you've been on a ship one time. Do you remember that time when you were on the ship? That was recently. Tell me if you remember that because you were on the ship and they were communicating with you. Let's see. How do you see life in the next 10 years? A lot of contact, I'll say that. A lot of awakenings among humans. Sara said, I have a Yu-Gi-Oh card from Japan. My Japanese tech gave it to me. Better use that shit, bro. Use it, dog. I love it. Aaron said, a few days ago, I went to some planet in a dream and some woman was talking to me telepathically about signing some unity thing, but I'm not too sure. I bet you that unity was related to the Glocky Federation, unifying with certain beings. Sounds like, a, sounds like, um, what is it called? We were talking about it with Robbie. It's like a, it's like a, you're signing something and it's, I, for, I forget what it's called. But you know what I'm talking about. You're making a contract. Yes, thank you. You're making a contract with beings related to unifying with something or somebody. First get clear with what it is with them, and then you do so. Char said, have you ever checked any videos of the channel Astro Club? He has 50 plus years of astral experience, probably the most experienced projector at the moment. I have not actually. I'll check them out. Is that on Instagram or YouTube? I think it's YouTube because I feel like I've seen that before. You okay, that's what I thought. Because I've seen that before. When I was really into astral projection when I was little, I watched a lot of Ryan Cropper. Loved him. If it's like with Robbie, then that's fire. Yes. It's very high vibrational, but I want you first to just get clear with them and ask them because they, you at least... They showed you that they want you to sign something, some sort of contract in the astral with them. So now, now you could delve in it and ask them more about it, and then you comply with it. Rainwater said, I think maybe a week ago, I was hearing what sounded like a ship taking off, and it was like I was on it, but I could hear it, and I was vibrating a little and off in awake and asleep there you go okay that was the that was the ship we were talking about 
you were on it for sure. You may not remember it, but that's okay. You're not, you're not necessarily supposed to remember. Oh, yeah, if this is being recorded, I would love for it to be posted in the server so anybody can watch it after. Thank you for doing that, by the way, Andy. And this could also be something. Oh, yeah, don't forget. We also, Robbie, or was Andy, sorry, who created a little YouTube channel for this where these are going to be posted. I thought that was I, I when I saw that I was like yo Andy's on fire today so we all want to thank you Andy and we appreciate you doing this for us Rainwater said I don't remember a lot just what I heard and I felt and I did take your advice on telepathically speaking to the Acturians awesome keep up with that all right you talk with them telepathically and you continue with that and you continue to improve your astral awareness and like your remembrance. The more you remember and the more you continuously like purposely try and remember, you're going to increase your remembrance, which is why I always tell you guys a dream journal is important or an astral projection journal is important. Even if you only remember a point, you write it down, you get into it, write it down, you get into it. And you'll notice over the years, you can remember more without the journal. Now, I don't have a journal, but the journal helped me a lot, a lot at the beginning. And it helped me to get to where I am now. What I've been up to in my sleep, I don't remember the past couple of nights. Jeannie, you've been, you already know you've been diving a lot into your past life memories and getting information about your past lives, especially the Draco energy in your sleep and you've been talking with a lot of your higher self in your sleep so if you don't remember that's okay subconsciously you're there what would you advise to overcome fear before stepping into astral projection or seeing other beings period is to just do it you just have to do it and what will increase so there's two things i say just do it <laughs> Not trying to sound like, and everybody's gonna be like, yo, Nike, just do it or, and understanding it. When you understand how these things work, everything will be easier. When you understand how demons work, you won't be so scared of them. It may startle you when they come up, but you're not scared of them because you understand how they work. Best way to overcome fear is education and just doing it for sure. Yes. Now you're going to need that courage and that warriorship that almost all of you live by. All of you here are warriors in some form. And we're all drawn to fighting the Archon or the, the kingdom of darkness that's on Earth and in the galaxy. So what you were learning here, what you were learning in your lives, what you were, the actual training you're getting, what you're being taught by other spiritual people, beings, your guides, whatever it is, all of that is so we could be unified and be an army together. And I wanted to bring that up as well. This whole discord is meant to be the army, our kingdom. And that's why I want to rename it. Like I, I want something that emphasizes it's the kingdom because everybody that comes here is a warrior. And we are all, even though right now it's 24 of us in here and all 24 of us have the unified mentality of we are warriors and we're here to fight the Archon or the dark forces, however you want to label it as. And as a unified group, we're powerful as hell. All of you fight in different ways, or you bring something different to the table, and that's what we need. So don't try and feel like you need to be a certain way. Do it your way. Galactic Kingdom of Gaia. You know what? Let me chimps let me take a picture of that because i like that shit a lot actually thanks thanks for that luca i like that koki boki asked what was the meaning behind this dream i had with a hurricane and then i could control the weather and i said believe and put my power in mother earth's and work up in the dream warnings my mom about a hurricane coming and then everyone was in the middle of the street um it was weird Ooh. 
So a dream about a hurricane and that you could control the weather. And he says a lot about how much more power you have. Hinting toward the more deeper power you have. Believe, and you said, uh, believe in the power of Mother Earth. And I work up in the dream where my mom about a hurricane and everyone stood in the middle of the street. Hmm, honestly, not quite sure about that. But it was really hinting toward your power may not be literal, but it's very metaphorical and your connection, trusting the earth and your connection with the earth and you're getting power from the planet. Perfect. Ash of Fox said, where'd it go? How do you know if you have had contact with dragons in a past life? If you feel very drawn to dragons, you feel almost you are them, or you notice you have like just a, you feel them in here. It's not just like a thought of dragons and you think they're interesting, but you connect with dragons very deeply. That is huge. So I would like for you guys to trust if you know you're in contact with dragons. Regina said, whoa, my dream just came back. I had a dream about a tornado this morning. Seems like everybody's having dreams about like nature and the weather, things like that. And that cool, like natural disasters. I think my clear audience is picking up because my ears have been clogged, but also I've been hearing static. And I remember you said I could hear frequencies and that the Arcturian send frequencies to communicate with me. And now I sort of it. It's happening. It's happening. I'm telling you that right now. I did some dragon light language last night and the language felt so resonant. That's my boy, bro. That's my boy, Luca, going at it. You already know it, dog. I've been having dreams lately of going back to school, like high school. Oh, I used to have those a lot. This is about a year or two after I left high school. I kept having dreams that I was back there. And it's because I kind of wanted to go back. So how, how do you get more vivid dreams or astral projections? Okay, there's different things you could do. You could put a selenite under your pillow and be... Be warned, though, you do this and your astral projections and dreams are going to be potent. You're going to be in the astral realm very strongly. Your body, you're going to go in a deep sleep and your astral body is going to be active. If you do notice your dreams or your astral projections, same, we'll consider them the same thing, really. If your travels are fuzzy, it's because you're not fully in the astral realm or in your dream universe. If they're very clear... You're almost fully, sometimes it'll be so clear, you'll, you could literally punch a wall and it will hurt. Not like in the physical, but it will hurt. Or you'll feel the pressure and like the, the owl. That's how you know you're really rooted in the astral realm. Selenite will help you. You could use like, like a, if you click in my bio, there's some of them Stellis pills. You could take those to help you sleep deeper, to get deeper in the astral plane. Or you just really set the intention and putting your energy toward the astral realm in your dreams. That takes a process. I used to always use selenite and always use the dream journal. And then over time, it got really easy where I don't have to do any of that and they're really potent. But at the beginning, I had to do that or I wanted to do that to help me. I haven't done anything differently and I had all these experiences. Cool. I just want to inform y'all there is light language against mosquito bites. Is that act really? If that's true, I'll take it. I mean, well, I'll take that shit, right? You know what they need? They need like a, some sort of vaccine shot that when the mosquitoes bite you, they like die. Or like instantly when they land on you, they're dead. But I, I don't think I'd still take that anyways. I ain't taking no vaccine. I always get so confused with my lucid dream and astral realm feels the same. I feel things, even pain. I can control what I want to say. Exactly. That's why I said, do not take and label 
astral projections and dreams is different. They're still you traveling. So, of course, they will be potent no matter what. Dream universe is just you traveling in your mental universe. And astral projection is traveling outside of that mental universe. So, same thing, different areas, different realms. Let's talk about that in a TikTok. Okay, give me literally 10 seconds. Let me put that in my notes. I have a list of videos to make next week. Cannot wait. So. Okay, there we go. That's a really good topic. Hey. What's up, Macklin? Hey, how's my brother? Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> it's okay. We're doing really good. <laughs> we're just talking about astral projection and I'm answering a bunch of questions and we're just having a good conversation. What's this little document you got going on here? Oh, yeah. I had this one queued up for a long time. We were uh -huh. just talking about astral projection. We were going to go into this and click some things around, but we were heavily going into the different races and beings out there. And Wait, is this World of Warcraft? It is. Bro, that's my shit. That's my shit. I know. It's my I... shit too, dog. Bro, so many memories. <laughs> I'm loving it. And when we came across this, I said, I said I'm said, i waiting until Macklin comes because the Morgan part will not leave me alone. Oh, every time my God. You know, I don't even think I've ever played as that character. I played as um, a bunch of them, though. I think I played a human, a night elf. I played the um, the pa panda like one. I think I played the org one. I had like this org woman. Um, the blood elf I played. I love all of these because it's so real. Like we touched on humans and how they're known for their human spirit. Like all races know them as powerful for their spirit, or like like for example the dragons or the alpha draconians and their powers like it it's so real i was just given a briefing about this from the federation last night which is why i have all is the world warcraft stuff queued up um hold up <laughs> okay while you do that i'm gonna answer chart Wait. oh go ahead so these th is this the um, the site with like game of world uh game of worldcraft oh wait G oh wait fuck i don't remember world of warcraft actually yes. you know what let me let me just share it in because, the comments like i remember it being more like there was a lot more different classes this um these are the races and then they have classes which we were just talking about are for real for real too so we were saying how sarah's a rogue <laughs> and shit like that and then how just are the amazing. animations on their side they have like they look way more hyper realistic in the game yeah like, this I'm is just their about. website describing all their stuff in the game oh, okay the rogue is pretty good mm -hmm. I we like just the use magic. these as example for for real for real. So when we dive into some of the races and their powers and how you're gonna see a lot of these when you astral project on Earth or especially outside of Earth. Yeah. Uh, there was a question. Shoot, where to go? There was something that uh, Char asked. I don't know where it went though. Um. Oh well, it's okay. So. Overall, guys, let's go back to the astral projection part. Let's see if there's anything here really potent. <laughs> hmm. Dream states. Oh, this is kind of new. Hmm. Okay, let's touch on this in one second. For now, let's, let me read some of these comments and get through some things, and then we'll touch on this. Oh, damn. A screenshot is wrong. I'm taking a screenshot of this little chart so I can show it to people. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it's a, it's a good chart. Oh, here we go. I found Char's uh, question. Why this past week 
has been so intense spiritually considering I had my first astral projection, five sleep paralysis of vision and the past life memory I told you about. We told you, Char, it's time. You are in the mode where you're stepping more into your realization of yourself. We talked about how you are awakening on the 5D level to a lot of shit about yourself. So expect a lot more astral projections. And the sleep paralysis is the gateway. It's helping you. It's, it's like you go into sleep paralysis. It's like, oh, do you want to astral project? And you're like, hell yeah. And then you hop out or not. Nah, I'm good. And then you stay in your physical body. So the, astro, the, the sleep paralysis is very much a gift. And I don't have sleep paralysis. I wish I did. But if you have sleep paralysis, that is very much an ability that you should use. And you are being given. Beautiful. Sean has bad sleep paralysis. I'll take it. I'll, I'll, if, if he doesn't want no more, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. He said I, that I he, like, run down the hallway and, like, scream. He thought somebody was, like, in the house trying to kill us. And we're like, oh, it's Sean. <laughs> oh, it's Sean. <laughs> it's just Sean, guys. You guys go back to bed. <laughs> it was every night. It was, like, every, every night. Yeah, I had um a dream last night, and uh, this person, uh, that's married to my cousin, she died like this week in a car accident, and she's like twenty, but she came to me in my dream, and she was showing me her watching over his sister, which I thought was interesting. Whoa! I didn't realize that that was who it was until like I woke up, but uh, I was lucid, but like sometimes I just don't make it. <laughs> Mm. You know what? That's perfect to talk about this right here, this chart. Talk about lucid dreams. Let's start with that. So a lucid dream is a dream which you know that you are dreaming. It's called a lucid dream. It generally happens when you realize during the course of your dream that you are dreaming. Perhaps because something strange or unexpected occurs. These, these dreams may reveal personal information as you observe and... Uh, pres or as you observe the development of the dream through expression of your feelings while being aware that you are dreaming. That one's really good. A lucid dream may develop directly or indirectly into an OBE, which is exactly what I was telling you guys about the technique I use. Original dreams. They are created by ourselves as the reality we want. Dream reality is removed from the physical reality as a prearranged series of events in which we play a role. It's like being an actor in a movie. However, there are different variations of original or common dreams which differ due to personal desires or influential substances within the body. For example, if we are using a pre prescribed drug or medicine due to a certain illness, that might have certain side effects, whatever, whatever. So, again, it says, uh, remove from the physical reality or prearranged series of events that you play a role in, like an actor in a movie. We, same thing as it's your personal universe, your dream universe. So remember that. I'm curious what it's going to say about nightmares. And just so you know, Macklin, I'm going to, I have to go in like 15, 20 minutes. So after this, if you wanted to take the floor, as you know, we always do, like, I mean, <laughs> And you come after and take the floor. I love that if you want like to. We ifs. <laughs> <laughs> so nightmares. Although a nightmare may shake us up, they should not be taken literally as they may only be warnings for a potential event. However, nightmares can also occur due to a uh, preoccupation with solving a problem or if experiencing um the side effects of a medicine most of the time nightmares are a way for oh wait what does it say here nightmares are very different from reincarnation dreams that contain negative experiences do they have that in here reincarnate oh they don't maybe it'll be in here somewhere but um after this guys we'll go to dreams and uh, our dimensions and realities i'm curious about that but nightmares a lot of times are just essentially they're just dreams but they are very low vibrational. A lot of low vibrational beings will use your dreams resulting in nightmares to scare you, which a lot of you have had so many experiences with. You know, actually, I don't think I've ever had a nightmare, like, in my whole life. Really? I've had, like, crazy shit happen, but it's never scared me to the point where it'd be a nightmare. Like, 
you you've heard some of the dreams I've had. They're a little crazy sometimes, especially um when it's just astral and like I'm fighting Plea Dark Pleiadians. Um but um I've never had a scary dream. Like I ha- I've never had a dream scare me. I don't know. That's just something about me. <laughs> like because that one time in this one dream, it was in the college. Remember, I told you about it. I had like some kind of message, and these guys jump off the building and slit their throat right in front of me while I'm like walking back to my dorm, and I just I was like, what the fuck? And they just kept walking. I was like, like it didn't scare me. Bro, this girl's different. You must be different because everybody in here is like, as soon as you say I don't have nightmares, everybody's like, what? Like you don't have nightmares, bro? No, like I have crazy shit happen in my dreams, but it's not scary. It's okay, just, okay. I, I don't know. I guess I just don't get scared. <laughs> so you do have like dark dreams that just aren't scary to you. I have some, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay. I understand that. It makes sense. It's kind of random. It just happens. It's like, okay, what? And then I just keep going. Like, okay. <laughs> no, it's because I'm lucid, and I've been lucid since I was a kid, okay? This is why it doesn't affect me, because, like, I have lucid dreams. I have since I can remember. Like, I've never not had lucid dreams. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, I've never had a lucid dream. And so, when things happen in my dreams, I know I'm in a dream. So, I'm like, I don't, I don't get phased by it. It's like, okay, whatever, it's not real, bye. <laughs> like, okay, that was weird. <laughs> I just keep walking back to class, like, ooh, having fun in my little dream world. <laughs> Ari said, since I'm sick, I'm dealing with some entities in my travels and barely can remember. There is some goblins there. Or I don't even like calling them that. It sounds so woo-woo, but goblin-like beings. Have you seen those? Have you, do you at all remember anything fately of like hinting or letting you know that? Okay, you know, okay. Ari, you're getting ready to do some battling. You, and you're, you already know it. You already know it. You already see it. So, but remember, you always have assistance. You always have people who are here for you. All 22 of us in here. So, we got you no matter what. Just let us know what's up. I am prepared since yesterday. Get it, dog. Get it. Yes, I'm ready to see it. I'm curious what this is going to say about spirit guide dreams. When we are having an ordinary dream and some of the characters protect us, we're being contacted by our spirit guides. Protection may take shape through helping hands or communication. The entities in these dreams are in fact our spirit guides, which we all have through our (laughs) lifetimes. Hmm. When communication takes place, we don't feel scared or shy as subconsciously we know them from other realities. These dreams differ from mediumship because they start and end as ordinary dreams. Okay. What about universal archetype dreams? Since we all belong to the same origin, a person may have the same dream as another due to the universal consciousness we all share, aka God. Cool, cool. Hmm. Okay, last two ones. When the astral body separates itself from the physical self and travels a particular place or event, the experience is referenced as an out of body experience. Okay, yeah, that's essentially just uh, like basic astral projection. Psychic dreams, prophetic dreams that tell you about the future, telepathic dreams, the dream receives information from another person. Living or dead. This is what I have all the time. Wow. Oh, I yeah. Have, I remember you'd always tell me about the communication. Category, this mm-hmm. whole, like, category, because I have such lucid dreams since I was a kid, I also had very prophetic dreams. And so I would have spirits speaking to me in my dreams, like my dead aunt. Not only did I speak to her when I was awake, but I spoke to her when I was asleep, too. And then I would have, like, events happen, and then I would see them, and then, like, yeah, and they still happen like that. I think I talked to my aunt the other day in my dream, and my grandmother came through and told me about something that, like the day before. A lot of you will have this, and Macklin's been doing this for a long time. So if you ever want to know more about that, you could easily ask your guides, or if you want like physical confirmation and all that, Macklin could definitely help you with that for sure. You know something funny? When I was like, 
seven. I thought the government was gonna come get me if they found out that I had like these type of dreams, <laughs> and like um like the visions and stuff. I thought that yeah, I thought the government was gonna come get me. I was convinced. <laughs> I mean, the government's watching all of us, right? So you're not all the way wrong. <laughs> no, dead ass. I was I, I was low key paranoid as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Sara uh, asks, what's in my room? I just saw some shadow move on my wall. Sara, you know that you have some, what we label as shadow people around you. You felt them around you. You know they've been around you. And I've seen them a while. And I knew those are going to be one of the first beings you fight were shadow people. So now that it's happening, you know how powerful as hell you are. You could just let them know quick, like, what are you here for? Like, who are you? I see you. Honestly, have a little com- conversation. See what their intentions are. And then fight their asses if need be. This is your time. Okay, now let's finish up. Let's see what the last few are. Reincarnation dreams are past life dreams or dreams in which an individual sees himself going through actions or places in which he or she is not familiar in present existence. But these dreams differ from mystical experiences as they are normally in black and white. Interesting. Mystical experiences or past lifetimes are a form of OBE that may have triggered through a form of transhypnotic regression. We, what we experience is very real. Almost all of y'all get reincarnation understandings just in downloads. You get memories. So reincarnation dreams may not be that common, but you may have them and they won't be in black and white. They may be, but I've never had a, a incarnation dream in black and white. So we'll we'll see if you guys have that experience. Tar said, we're going to see the dimension playing category too. Oh, yeah. Once I did a class with Drin on the other server a lot of time ago about the seven planes of astral projection. It's very interesting. Okay. let's We could go and run over that real quick um, before I head out and then let Macklin take the floor clairvoyant dreams these dreams allows the dreamer to perceive things beyond the natural range of senses which trigger extrasensory perception in other words the dreams create a keen intuitive understanding of places or events related or unrelated to the person i mean we really do that almost all the time perceive things beyond the natural range of senses i mean we really do that while we're in our physical body rainwater said OMG, my first past life dream was in black and white. Really? Ooh, okay. So so from what we're seeing, then that's not, I mean, I didn't say it was incorrect, but I was thinking, I'm like, I've never had that before. I don't, I don't know if that's real or not. But now we know that that's a real thing then. I never oh, had black uh, dreams. I always had color. Yeah, same for me. Yeah, um, I've had past life dreams before. Well, I had them like, all the time as a kid like especially like I had this one reoccurring memory and like I would get it like like quite a few times a week um during like this certain like age I think it was like 12 8 somewhere somewhere in between there um and I could see colors in mind um like it was like I was living it again like went through the whole day and then it would just happen over again. Ooh, Genie, there's time here, dog. What? And it goes to Chinese calendar. What? Oh, they added some more stuff to this, man. What? Okay, dimensions. We need to make a whole class for this. <laughs> Look how much information is in this. I right, who's um, going to talk about dimensions once? But I would really like to look at what they have. And they have projection types. Remote viewing, near-death experience, interdimensional project- projection, epilepsy. Never heard of this one. Somnambulism, Somnamalism. As sleepwalking. Sleepwalking? Oh. Yeah, it says commonly referred to as sleepwalking. It occurs when OBE takes place and the astral body is liberated from um, 
catalyst be, but remains unconscious. And this is a state or condition of suspended animation and loss of voluntary motion in which the limbs remain in whatever position they are placed. During this, the subconscious mind controls the wandering body. So essentially sleep paralysis? That's what it sounds like to me. And then... No, wait. They're walking while astral projecting. Okay, so... So, like, their uh... mind's off. They're astrally, like, remote, like, controlling their body, basically. Okay. I always found sleepwalking kind of creepy. I'd never done it in my life, but Tape said I used to sleepwalk. Really no, cool. You know, Hannah, Hannah eats in her sleep. Like, she'll wake up and eat. <laughs> she has that. Like, she'll hide snacks from herself sometimes because she'll eat them in her sleep. Even if she Yo, does. y'all are funny, bro. I could just, I could just see her like, like with her eyes closed, going in the cupboard for some damn Doritos. <laughs> no, that's literally what she does. <laughs> <laughs> well, she actually doesn't like Doritos, but she'll like, she like, she's like, um, sugar addict. Um, uh, it's always sugar. That's all she eats. So she'll like have chocolate chips on a graham cracker with some marshmallows, <laughs> <laughs> or like, um cake or oreo <laughs> just junk food dog <laughs> uh, that's you know what you said that now i want some cake too Damn. look what you did look what you did <laughs> I want <your> cake. <laughs> no i've started the sweet the sweet addiction <laughs> yo angelie said i fell asleep with pizza in my mouth while sleeping when i was younger oh. <laughs> <laughs> dog I I fell asleep with what I, it was literally Doritos in my mouth, and I was st- I woke up and I I was still going like this, I was still like chewing them. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man, I'm here dodging sugar and y'all talking about sweets. Listen, I need me, I need me my sugar. I need Wait. me my sugar, please. Who's dodging the sugar? Luca. Oh. Not me. I'm sorry, bro. I need me my slice of cake. I have like a snack section in my backpack. Oh, yeah. I have my own little dash in the corner, too, that nobody knows about. For some reason, I don't know how my sister knows about it, but she knows it's there. But little chocolate, some chips, just in case. You know, when you smoke and then you you get that honey. Yes, bro. I got to have my chips. Yeah. Yeah. And I always try and get the vegan ones as much as possible. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. it, to be honest. Yeah. I didn't even know there was vegan chips. Bro. <laughs> Damn. You know, if you wanted to, um, do you have this website here? Uh, no. Okay, wait. Actually, my computer's, like, messed up right now. Okay. I, they, like, they messed it up. It was their fault. I don't know who who the computer people are, but they're annoying. <laughs> I was gonna say I have to go in a second, but if you wanted, you could go over this document and these with the people, especially this dimensions one. People may want to hear about that now, and if not, I'll just make another class for it. Yeah, we might have to make another class because um my um wait. I might, yeah, let's just make another class. Okay. Okay. A class I for had to recover, I had to recover this Microsoft account because I couldn't send a confirmation email because I didn't have access to the confirmation things. It's a whole big thing. Anyways, you okay. know I have the worst time with technology. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. <laughs> no, I, my website's still not built. <laughs> Yo, have I, have to, I forgot about the website. Oh, we damn it, we always forget about that. But, <laughs> but you know what? I think right now, let, let me let me put that aside. I want to uh make videos first. Like everything I want to put in the website, I just want to make videos for first and then put a website together where people can read. I rather videos first. 
So I'll, I'll just focus yep. on video for now. And then for you, divine timing, like Lucas said, divine timing with the website will go along as it should. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really need it no more since I got my PayPal working, but yeah, okay, it would be you nice do. To have it so I can start making content. But okay. it'll happen when it happens. I'm not worried about it. I'm seeing some of you guys, you guys are showing that the website doesn't work where you're from yeah it looks like it's looks like it's Wait, blocked did you send me this website oh i put it in the comments oh but you um send... if you want do you want me to text like, it to you on snapchat uh yeah we're just on discord so it'll save to our chat it's gonna be easy to find this is what the core of it looks like guys this is this really cool Oh, wow. Feeling, that is a cool-ass website. Yeah. Imagine about... being able to make a website like that. What the hell? Like, that's skilled. That is skilled. I know. Where do you click to see the ass projection stuff? I can't even make a basic-ass one. <laughs> so if you guys are in North America and you want to access this website, you know what? I'll just... I'll, let me just send the thing here for you so you guys could check it out on your own if you can. And it looks beautiful, so you guys may wanna may wanna check it out. Yeah, and I, if we can't, if you can't, and um, well, I was gonna say in my night events, we'll check it out. But most of the people in my night events are in our area, like North America. Yeah. So you know what? Let's just do classes on this then. Yeah. Okay, so our next class, guys, we will delve into dimensions. I gotta go now because I got a quick quest to go on. So, oh, I, you better tell me about this later. <laughs> I definitely will. So, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and Macklin is now gonna do the other half of the event if she wants to. I know she likes doing that. So, now the rest is gonna be with Macklin. And I'm so glad you guys were here with me. This one was pretty short, but. All good because I want to go live later and chat more. So we're going to do that. And remember what we talked about, guys. You remember we talked about us being the army and us being here together as warriors to fight the Archon, if you want to call it, or the Dark Force here. And we have huge plans together to be one and to really do what we really want to do. So I want to thank you guys for being here with me. And thank you for all you are doing now, the training you're doing, the amazing quests that you're going on, and the leveling up you're doing at this moment. Love you guys so much. And someone asked, um, oh, it was Char, he asked, where will the live be on? I think I want to, oh, Instagram or TikTok? I'll do, I'll do Instagram. I'll do Instagram. <laughs> I was about to say, we're supposed to check if TikTok gives me a notification. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you guys know as well when I start going live on TikTok more. Next week is the start to lives on TikTok a lot. So for now, though, today we'll do the one on Instagram. So you guys just make sure you got the bell icon saved. And I will see you there. Until then, we'll let Macklin take the floor. Thank you, Macklin. <laughs> Bye. All right. Peace, guys. Love you all. Oh, who wants to come onto the stage? Because, yeah, why not? Everybody's welcome. Just raise your hand. Um. Hello. 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 Luca. Hello, hello. So, how is everybody? Doing good. Um, hey. Yeah, so.
So uh, I missed like the whole class, so I don't really know what the topic is. I took notes, well, some notes, and Andy had made a recording on it, and he's going to post it sometime later. And okay. the G. Slave. <laughs> and of course, I will share my notes as soon as this is a class is over. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, Macklin, how was the school being high and all? Um, like, that's like every day. Like, it's like every other day of school. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no difference. Hi. Hey. Okay. What's up? I'm good. I'm still recording. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be invite everybody to speak. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, come to the stage. Sarah, as higher roles, we can join ourselves. <laughs> we have a button. Hi, Luca. Hello. <laughs> Yo, what's up? What's up? Yeah. What's up, guys? Hey. How have you been? Good, good. Of our hello. Hi, you guys, welcome to the stage. Yes. Think... Hey, Sarah. <laughs> now it looks like a normal call. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> yes. Hey, Maya. So, how is everybody? Thoughts about the class? All. Yeah, how, what did you guys um think about the class? Do you guys have any like remaining questions or anything? Not really. I can just say that I was really happy because of my inner child was uh was uh, appearing, man. It it was burning because of wow recognition, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. I was so excited with the whole World of Warcraft thing too. Uh, hey. <laughs> I literally joined I literally... Last, last minute, but I, but even I was excited about it. I was like, it's the first thing I noticed. I was like, wait a minute, I know that it blew up. I was like, yeah. It's... I usually pace around my room when we have meetings and classes, but right now I was jumping around out of excitement. <laughs> hey, Leia. Hey, guys. Hey. Hello. Hello, Leia. Aww. Your daughter is so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> hey Leah. Um, hey everybody who joined. Hey. <laughs> hey. Maybe I have some <laughs> some question, hey. Megan. Um I would love to say hi to your kid. And you. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. 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 Can I have a bath? How are you? <laughs> what you doing, Sarah? Yeah. Oh, that view is so pretty. Oh, that is pretty. Belgrade, <laughs> pretty. Belgrade by night. Who's the three? The camera is shit. <laughs> shit. No, it's just dark. Oh my gosh. It is really shit. Mm -hmm. If I was you, I would drop a dog. Yes. They're snakes. <laughs> and like big 
like really big fishes. It's really and dirty. And, and dirty. I wouldn't do that because I, I would get a rash 100%. Yeah. No, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that, that. Oh. It's so cute. Yeah. Luca, I heard you. You wanted to ask a question. Oh yeah. A uh, few few no, minutes no, ago. No, no. Can you repeat it? No, no. Ah yeah, no problem. Uh, I just um... want to know because I'm not traveled one time successful, uh, really successful uh, in the astral realm. Uh, mm -hmm. If um, lower vibrational beings have to show their real form to me in the astral realm or can they can they for example uh um take the look of anyone i i know in the real uh, real life or yeah yes if you understand they, this. Can. they can do that but you can also command them to show themselves to show their true intentions okay yes, nice to like... know yeah like bugs. <laughs> Peasants. Bugs. Peasants. <laughs> so, what would uh, what do you guys think about um, me hosting meditations? Like, I'm gonna try to do them early in the morning, maybe like five, six EST if I can. Um, that may not be for a few weeks, but I'm gonna start doing morning meditations on the weekends. For I sure, would love that. I mean, Sarah and I are either in school or about to sleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry about us. Yeah, we. We have our own mental breakdowns about something. <laughs> this um, I found one sign to do my gateway meditation today because my English book is called Gateway. Damn, I didn't do anything oh. about it. Oh, that's awesome! I guess I have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I love everyone's accents. Like, I love Europeans. <laughs> yeah. I love Thank you. Okay. Like, I know that you guys are, like, some of them are insecure about their English isn't good, but I'm like, I don't care. I can understand. You just keep talking. <laughs> right. <laughs> I really got it. I really am like, my English sucks. Uh, not that much, but still, you can clearly, clearly hear the accent. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. Especially yeah, with you like... actually have really good English, you just don't know. <laughs> it's, like it, it's actually really good. <laughs> yeah, like I was so pressured to learn grammar. English grammar in middle school that now when I see people that are native to English language make such obvious mistakes with you, you are, and your, <laughs> I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Bro, that took me so long to learn. Like, it was... How? Man, How? Man, how man. Used, when you used was. Like, you guys don't believe me because I'm a native English speaker, but I am terrible at language and even speaking it like i'm just bad at it that was my favorite subject like i was in really good in english really i liked yeah. math same i like andy i, like I really like the thumbnail you yeah. should put it yeah i put something in chats just if it's good or not i love it oh yeah i really liked it I love languages and I wish I knew how to speak more. I love Spanish. Spanish is my favorite language. 
Abang Hola. Abang. Hola. ¿Cómo es todo? No, hablo Una chita, papacita. <risa> Bien. <risa> no hablo español, no. No. no Amigo, hablo. no. Cállate. Anish is my first language. Spanish? Oh, no. Oh, no. Flexionos. Do you have uh, sí. family still in, in Spain? No, I was born in Colombia, so I have family okay. in Colombia. Actually, funny enough, actually, I do have family in Spain, but they're not from Spain. <laughs> they're from Colombia, and I have family in nice. the States, and I'm in Canada right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. So I thought they speak, uh, they speak uh, Portuguese in, in, in Colombia, yeah, but okay. No, it's Spanish is our okay. native language. Okay. They speak Portuguese in Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Portuguese in, in, in Brazil and okay. Portugal. Oh, cool. It's also funny how you you also have French in Latin America because of French Guyana. Yeah. Yeah, I'm learning French and I'm also trying to learn Italian. I love languages so much. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm, goals. Nice. I used to like hyperfixate randomly on languages and try to learn them. And then, like, yeah. the duo would eventually make me angry and I'd just delete the app. <laughs> 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 I'd get like a month or so in and then I'd get pretty good at it. And then, like, I'd be speaking it. And then the, the, the app would just make me angry. <laughs> so then I would lose. <laughs> He's still sending me emails. I heard how Duolingo is actually bad for overall learning languages because it doesn't target the, the core of the learning. Because when you are learning languages, you should use the same, uh, the same path you did as a child. First, you just listen, then people correct you, and then you speak on your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are starting to watch... Spanish movies. Okay, no. so you teach me Serbian? Yeah. <laughs> you think you're asleep, huh? You think you're asleep. Yeah, Luca and Sada, they've been trying to teach me Serbian, but I'm like terrible at pronouncing <laughs> I've been trying. Mm -hmm. that I want to learn Serbian. That sounds cool. I just want to learn. Until, until you start speaking it, it's not. <laughs> I did learn you one should... word. I'm just hearing them talk. It was da. It means yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, have safe trip, Hypnos. Yeah. Yeah, try safe. Yeah, safe trip. Yeah, be safe, man. Man. Be safe. <laughs> so sorry, you are focusing on conscious projecting, or you will do lucid dream. Conscious right now, but I don't know because when I go lucid, it's like really random. So I yeah. don't know, like same. nothing triggers it. I just become aware. Mm, yeah, same. What day are you on the gateway? Um, I still haven't finished the fourth. Damn, I thought I was be I was behind. too tired. School makes me really tired and drained. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I saw a picture of Sirius burning and I thought I spent hour again on doing it so I just woke up and so I had 10 minutes left. Yeah, that Sirius was, and, uh, attacked a lot during the Orion Wars because... It was basically like a, a refugee mm -hmm. place for a lot of planets mm -hmm. that got like was being took over or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we had a lot of different beings there at one point. We still do because of our schools. But we had a mm -hmm. lot of beings there, especially on series B and A. Um, so yeah, series B got attacked a lot um, because like they was mad at us. <laughs> we had mm -hmm. all the people. Yeah. Ali, I, I, I want to tell you that I mean I al already did about your frequency I listened to but there's a funny part when I, the memory I actually got was from Macklin's wedding and then I asked her 
Macklin, how did the guy you married look like? And she told me she had uh, locks and gold, something golden in his hair. I saw a bald guy with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not me. Very young. <laughs> she does like the Anunnaki. <laughs> Even though she didn't kill a lot of them. <laughs> That's that's because of them. I know. <laughs> that, that's on them. Disrespect my Siri. Kill Wait. my dragon. But yeah, Wait. I'm happy, Luca, that um you tried it out and that you felt called to do it. I don't know like if everyone listened to it, but it's definitely something like you gotta be guided to listen to. And that it no ri- worries, originally no. wasn't it wasn't really my intention that it would bring back memories, but I just felt called to really name really it, like, Remembering Home. It's really calming, and I saw a lot yeah. of dolphins. Oh. And uh, luminescent forest. Uh, forest. Oh. Yes, Alia, don't worry about it. Game recognizes game. Now, <laughs> back. <laughs> And, and also, and also, I was listening to your light languages, and what I want to tell you is that you should try you being um, louder. Okay. Yeah, I have a. I think I have a microphone that I'm gonna use, so the audio is like more clear, so there isn't like much background noise. But also, like I did a Come light language studio. last Come night. To the studio. I got you. I did a light language last night where. Um, my mm-hmm. intention was to channel like my inner Lyran um, to help people embrace their authentic truth and their, their purpose on this live. So I, I just have to edit that and then I'm going to upload it to my TikTok and my YouTube and Instagram. I'll post it here so you guys receive it. Nice. And for you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's super fun. I, I recently just started doing it. Um, yeah, it's just that time. Yeah, and I what I like about light languages is that everybody speaks different. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because it's it does it's not about what's coming like the the sound or like what you're saying. It's about yeah. intention. Your soul to another soul. Mm-hmm. And that's like the main like thing to re- like really understand when you're channeling is like take your ego out of it and like you 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 yourself have to just allow yourself to fall into a trance and just allow it to come through like no matter what. Yeah, it is really it's like a trance. Yeah. It's like you're just speaking from soul, like your soul. Yeah. And and also what is interesting is that people actually did uh, experiments on Bashar guy about the channeling and everything. And they didn't really prove that he was channeling, but they proved that when he started doing it, his brain frequency changed one, 180 uh, degrees. Wow. wow. Yeah, it, it spiked up. So they proved that something was going on in his brain. But you know, science bros don't want that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. First. Bro, I. Science my... bros are not shit out of me. I want to burn them all. Ah. Bro. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture I took of my old dog. <laughs> He's so old. Mm. Which one? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Got more hair. The, the photo you got. He's so hard to take a picture of because he never stops moving, but. Oh, the, uh-huh. the buck one. The buck. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the one with the funny teeth. He's actually really cute. That, that picture I have mm. showed you guys of him is so. Yeah. What's up, Zach? How's my brother? 
What's up? Remembered you. We were talking Hello, about World Zach. of Warcraft, man. Why wasn't you here? <laughs> you got me stressed for not being here. I'm gonna beat you up. So how's how are you guys doing? Man? Oh, it, it's nice. I, I'm liking it here. Yeah, I mean, I'm still right. not in like the this little town that I'm like really looking forward to going to, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Food is really good. Nice to hear. Are you doing world PvP with other shamans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they were they were testing me a bit in the beginning, and I mean, oh. it, it's like I gotta like hold my energy for real here, pretty, you know, more than I need to in the states, because all these shamans are, you know, yeah, the shamans and like these spirits that like do work for them and shit, like they're just waiting for me to like trip up. I feel like. Like whenever I like when I start to like get like shaky, it's like I feel them get excited and they like come to me. <laughs> mm. Oh, uh -huh. did, you, did you call your dragon? Um, I did once. Um, I've been mostly good with them. I called in Macklin's dragons last night. Actually, I was though, like, I think. Oh me, I was gonna ask. Oh, yeah, it was last night. You called in my dragon. I was like, okay. This is new because, like, when you said, when Lucas <laughs> said about a dragon, my dragon was like, um, I was there, and I was like, What? I was like, Did he call you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what did he assist you with? Um, I was calling them in for help with this, like, shaman, be like, with like the shaman that I was worried about, but then it was like, at the end of it, it was like. I think he might have gotten rid of one, but then there was another one that was, it was almost, I think that they were, they were actually friendly or something, and I just didn't know, because, I don't know, I, I had, like, a vision of them, like, putting their hand on your dragon's nose or something. Ooh. Interesting. Zek, how are you finding them? Like when when you're talking about the stories of you meeting shamans, I imagine you and them in us in some wild west scenario, like looking <laughs> at, at each other and about to draw the pistol. Like, <laughs> well, my I'm like very my connection to the astral is just like very fluid. So like I just kind of like tune into the astral space, just like feeling seeing what's around me and then sometimes i realize that there's someone there um yeah and also like if i start to go into like a lower vibration then i notice they start to kind of come around mm -hmm. interesting yeah. well i mean honestly that you, want, that you are winning yeah i mean to be honest they they're not that strong i mean there there's some i mean there's definitely a lot of them there's definitely shamans that are like really really powerful but not all of the and i don't even know that all these beings are shamans some of them are just you know you know it's just spirituality is so different down here a lot of people there's more people that are tapped in mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Do you, uh, how do you communicate with the people? Do you speak Spanish or do you speak in Me habla un poco español. I, I, I speak a little mm. bit of Spanish. Enough to get me around and being, since I can kind of like hear, I'm pretty telepathic and empathic. So it's pretty easy for me to understand them a lot of the time, but it, it really just depends. Sometimes I have no clue what they're saying, but... Like, <laughs> and then you you just smile and nod. <laughs> yeah, I just I I mean I, I try to figure it out. You know, if you if you really try, then you pick up you pick it up a lot more. Ooh, Zach, you told me about this. Um, what is this thing that you use to learn languages or like freshen up your language? That you was telling oh, in me. App? Yeah, that app. I think it's an app you might use. Yeah, language transfer. Yeah, could you like link that in the chat for like people that might want to learn like different languages or just 
you know, if they have plans to travel somewhere like Peru or something. Just so that yeah, they have where, in which Because I would like to have it just to have it. Like yeah, which chat? That would be nice. Um, Connections? I was thinking this one too. or like um, general or I don't know wherever you connection could be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like because... language transfer. Um, it, it's really good for like teaching you how to actually speak because it's like all about speaking. But there's other ones that are good for like you know learning, teaching you how to like read and speak and stuff too. But uh, that that one costs money. This one's free. Okay. Yeah, I'll link it. I'm better at understanding verbal Spanish. To be honest, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. I can read it sometimes, but um, um, yeah. No, no Spanish whatsoever because I just started like class in at my school, and I have no teacher. But they keep giving us assignments that's like in Spanish, and I have no idea what to do because I cannot read or speak the language. So I am stuck. Well, that's a bad school. Yeah, like, like there's like was never a teacher, and they just still put people in the class and i'm like what is it like an ingenuity <laughs> what does that mean is it like a uh, website or something that you're doing it on no it's like at public school and school on paper and on paper yeah why don't you guys still have on paper damn i wish we did my school no. sucks i mean we still have paper sometimes some teachers were like don't like using the uh- paper why are you you don't like how how privileged that is. About paper. <laughs> Man, no. you don't understand how privileged it is to it's use sad. your elect- your to use state. electronics. Listen, no, listen. Um, you'll understand why I say that. So, what from our experience and my grades experience from learning with and without the computers, we we all collectively agree that um the grades. So, like our all all of our elementary. Um, school we did we just had paper and we learned a lot better and we understood what we were learning but with the computers it's like we've got so much dumber like we all agree like we got so much dumber <laughs> because we just have the computer like it's easy to do work on computer because you could literally just look it up and there yeah. it was part of the learning so your brain like literally is not as a, like effective and efficient at learning things and learning new things because the computer, it's like you don't actually have to learn anything. You just have to copy and paste. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. like actually not a, not really a privilege. It's more like um annoying because so it's like you, we're not actually it's... learning. Now you got Jap GPT, to and they give you a lot that. more work. And you they give you a lot more work on the computer than like what they would they give you do. on paper because. On oh, a computer, they're like, oh, you can just copy and paste. It'll take you, like, five minutes. But in reality, it takes you, like, 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which doesn't do too good because, like, when it comes to tests and stuff, nobody knows anything. Education system. Yeah. And you know something? I would really like to, like, go and transfer like for a year to American school. You can. I know, but my parents are not my parents. My mom is really Don't worry, I know how your mom is. I was told. Yeah, I feel it. Honestly, you should try to convince your mom I don't think that will work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because can Balkan, Balkan moms, yeah, Balkan mm-hmm. moms it doesn't let me go by past nine outside. And you think that she will let me go to another continent <laughs> for a school year? Of course. <laughs> you are too optimistic for a Balkan life, and I like your optimism. <laughs> 
but it's not enough, sadly. Yeah, I mean, Slide, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think my school has a foreign exchange program. Um, it did like, I think this it one year or something. Switzerland. And it might have a foreign exchange program, just nobody comes here, maybe. But I don't think we actually do. Um, because I think the yeah. last time they did it, it was like... E- I actually know the last time they did it, because my, my, my teacher, um, she, she actually had that last uh, student exchange stay with her, and she was from Germany. <laughs> Seems really cool. They all love her. And they, she still comes and visit visits. <laughs> She's like a member of their family now. Oh, yeah, it's Aww. a really cute story. I think I'm going to earn that deflector rune by the time I'm done here in Peru. I'm like already, oh. I'm getting real good at it. Mm, right. Yeah, thank you, boy. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Slay. Slay your enemies. Raise up your arm. It reminds me of a game ad. What? Like what you just said. It sounds yes. like something on a game ad. I think it is. I do not understand. I don't speak English. Sorry. Um, like an advertisement? Like a, a game advertisement. Yeah. Game! Oh my god, they heard gay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I'm using two dollar earphones, which are mono speakers, man. I can't do shit. And my, my stereo name. earphones are reverse audio. I nah. I, I think say. I left them at my grandma's. And now I have to use some shitty ones that don't even have a speaker. I lost um all my all my earbuds. And I think Roxy stole one of mine. I also I can too. find either one. Yeah, I also think that. I had like one white pair. One one more, like, white pair and black pair, and they're gone. Nowhere in the house. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe. Please. So, either it's she or those shadow figures stealing my they're stuff. Fighting your shit. <laughs> well, if you need to beat up your sister, I can help you. Sibling uh, appreciation help. No, she al- yes. she already hates you. <laughs> I know that is why I told it. I said it. Um. Can you guys check uh, chat for a minute? Just about, I'm I'm going to go now, so mm-hmm. just to know oh. if if I can upload everything. Yeah, sure. I can. Yeah. 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 Okay.